What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy. Welcome back to my vlog. Um, this one is very much related to the last video, so if you haven't seen that one, please go and do so. Uh, you can do it before or after this one. It's not really a sequential kind of thing exactly, but I would encourage you to look at that to get my full range of thoughts on this matter. Uh, uh, there should be some sort of link somewhere up around here or somewhere on the screen Either way, I'll be leaving a link down in the description just to make sure that you have that there. Um, also, since this is related to the last one and covers some similar themes, I will make the same disclaimer request thing asking if you are under the age of 16, please, I'm personally re requesting that you not watch this video. I'm not going to be so strict as to say, no, you can't because that's really up to you, but I'm requesting that you not watch it just because there are some very mature themes and topics in this video to wrap your head around that I'm not sure anybody, or the, I'm not sure a lot of people under that age are really ready to contemplate thoroughly. So anyway, uh, last time around, I covered gay marriage and homosexuality and that kind of stuff. Uh, today I'm going to be covering a few more letters in the whole LGBTQI, I'm just going to add a plus there, because there are so many other letters that you could include in that whole thing. Initially, it, it was getting to a point where, for me, like, I was seeing all these articles online come up, and I just kept seeing more and more letters added to this, and I was thinking, come on, really, when are you going to stop adding letters to this? And that was when I decided to actually kind of look this up and be and think about, okay, what does this all mean anyway? All these different letters that we're attaching to this, you know, collective group. It definitely brought up a lot of questions in my mind after I was doing my research. By the way, the the website article thing that I looked at to research this stuff is also definitely going to be linked in the description. So check that out for yourself. If you're wondering what certain terms mean, I'm hoping I will, as a result of this, be a little bit more informed than just the average Joe, but I'm still not going to claim that I know a hundred percent for sure what, terms to use in what circumstances. When it comes to this, I mean, the real hot topic discussion part of it, I guess, for most people has been the whole target bathroom issue thing. For me, the way I'm seeing it and thinking about it is, yes, okay, I can understand people being worried about protecting their kids in public bathrooms and that kind of stuff. Really, I think the whole fact of transgender people being able to choose which bathroom they see fit, which which gender they identify more with. I don't think that's going to, to cause a substantial increase in sexual abuse within public restrooms because they are public. And in order to really, you know, engage in any of that kind of behavior you'd have to have stuff pretty well thought out to not just randomly waltz in and end up encountering five other people who are obviously not going to let something of that sort happen. And transgender people probably are not going to be the ones committing any of these kinds of acts because they've been worried all this time about being abused themselves because of the way they identify themselves. So I think ju I think giving them that freedom it, it it helps more than it hurts basically. Although if you really wanted to avoid this issue and have that be a non-factor in the first place, you could just have a whole bunch of gender new gender neutral single unit restrooms rather than you know, an open, vastly public, multi-person restroom area. Taking a step back from the bathroom 
issues specifically and just looking at transgenderism as a whole I again kind of like I said in the last video and I, I just want to encourage among those who are questioning that you know they contemplate it thoroughly I if, if you are having questions about your own sexuality or about which gender you identify as, um, I would just encourage you, again, A, to make sure that you're talking with somebody about it and getting a different perspective because especially if you're a teenager or, you know, somewhere in the stage of adolescence, there are a lot of changes going on with you. There are a lot of different chemicals and hormones going through your brain causing all sorts of chaos that can make you in the moment think that you are something different than what you would otherwise end up being and once you make kind of a life-altering decision towards one way or the other it's a lot harder to go back for example like uh for people who have become transsexual, I believe is the proper term, who have altered themselves physically so that they look more in line with the gender that they identify as, you know, that's something that it's a lot more difficult to go back from if you then realize that you are now not thinking the same way that you were before about yourself. My question to the people contemplating all of this is, do you identify as the opposite gender just because of some social construct that we have placed? Because gender in this day and age is somewhat of a fluid thing. I mean, the biological sex that you're born as is a totally different matter than the mental societal gender that you say you match up with because that's just it it's gender is more a construct of societal norms and what people think a typical man or woman should be like and if you're going through this big life altering decision to change your body physically just because of some societal construct or, you know, something that is basically just a matter of popular view that says this is how a man or a woman should be, then altering yourself physically is actually in a way just kind of giving in to that societal norm. It's only feeding that construct even further because you're physically altering yourself to look more like the gender that you're saying you act and feel and live more in in line with for me i can't help but wonder would you rather alter yourself physically and feed the social norm or would you rather engage in discussion and thought about the social norm and maybe once there's enough discussion generated over it perhaps bring some alterations to that norm that says you know what if you're a guy that likes doing this and being this way that doesn't mean you should turn yourself into a woman or vice versa with women to men. And also, okay, just because I've heard mentionings of this, I don't know how common or true this is, um, but I've been hearing things of parents saying that, like, their five-year-old kid is transgender or identifies as something different than they are physically. Parents, in that kind of situation... First of all, my question is, where in the world are you coming up with this kind of stuff? They're only five years old. How do you know? There's going to be a whole lot of changes coming up for them that I think will better determine and define that. Secondly, 
whenever that time comes, let them make the decision on their own. It's not your, even as a parent, I don't think it's your right to say to your child that they are transgender. But anyway, um, going back kind of somewhat to my last video and the thought process there, what really throws a wrench in the gears of my thought process in terms of the sexual relationship nature of all of this is um, people who are intersex, which basically means that they are physically and biologically born in such a way that they are kind of not really either male or female. Like, for example, I remember being taught in science class that there are some people born with an extra chromosome. You know, there's the X, there's the X and Y chromosomes. Typically, women are born XX, men are born XY. But someone who is intersex might be born XXY. Or, there might, or they might be born missing a chromosome or something like that. It's like, what do you do when you're physically both or physically neither male nor female? Again, going back to the whole, even just the, the, the physical nature of engaging in relationships, especially in you know, romantic and sexual relationships. From a, from a moral standpoint, I really am having a hard time wrapping my mind around how that relates to the whole intersex and being, you know, neither male nor female, really. That being said, it kind of, you know, makes me inclined to move a little bit on the side of tolerance, obviously, and more so on the side of, you know, if somebody is born a particular way, uh, it's, as a Christian, uh, you know, I assume that God loves and cares for all people, no matter how they are born. The question then becomes, how does someone who is intersex especially, someone who is outside of the typical male or female uh, in terms of even their physical and biological nature, how do they fit in with, you know, the typical Christian standard of marriage and relationships and that kind of stuff. This is still a question I'm very much contemplating. I am nowhere near giving any kind of an answer on it. I just, just because of the existence of intersex people, I am, you know, combining that with the fact that I don't think God would make somebody who biologically is incapable of following God's will of, you know, I don't think God would make somebody that by their nature biologically would automatically not fall in line with God's will and would pretty much be forced by their nature to disobey God's commands. So that that is just another reason for me to A, be tolerant and B, encourage discussion on any and all of this, whether it's people who are intersex, transgender, gay, lesbian, any of that. So yeah, I'm kind of going to leave that open-ended because honestly, that's where my thoughts are on this. Certainly feel free if you have some sort of big revelation when it comes to any and all of that, feel free to bring in your perspective because I'm still considering myself open and learning. With all that being said, that's going to do it for this time around. Next time, we will be uh, toning down the heat a little bit on these hot topics. Uh, 
covering something that is still very much a factor in our daily lives, but certainly not as heavily debated, I guess you would say. Hope you are all doing well, and I will see you in the next video. Later.